set off on what was to be just a quick weekend getaway as we hadn't been out with the campers since Overland Expo. The plan was to return to a spot we had previously scouted and attempted to camp at before in less than ideal weather. That trip ended after just one night and a collapsed awning later. The only issue with this spot is that it required traversing quite a bit of timber company owned land. The two previous trips posed no travel issues. This one, however, would spring one on us just five minutes from camp. At the border of the Tillamook State Forest and land owned by the timber company, we had hit a gate a mere two miles from camp. We made the decision to turn around and head to another spot we had been to before one that doesn't require crossing any private land. After backing up the rig for more than a mile to turn around, three hours later, we made it to camp and it was time to set up. Victor here. Just wanted to pop in really quick and say, did you know that if you leave your GoPro set up like this with a cable still plugged into your media mod that it completely disables the microphone on the media mod? Because I sure didn't. So I recorded the whole introduction to our camper video with that little cable plugged in and have no audio. So it's going to be a completely voiceover video. I apologize and don't blame me if you want to click away, but I'm going to do my best to not make it look like a horribly dubbed movie and do a voiceover on this. I'm getting ready to do another video on a couple little upgrades on our camper, but wanted to jump in here really quick and just let you know that it's not your audio it's mine anyway i hope you enjoy this video about our camper and i gotta get going to make this next video for you guys see you later after the unexpectedly long day of travel the day before we had just made dinner and relaxed watching the sun go down the next morning it was time for some coffee and then to show you guys around our rig
discovered Beadlock Coffee at Overland Expo PNW. While we are not sponsored, if you are looking for some really good coffee, I highly recommend it. We got the dark roast, which they call fully locked. They also have a light and medium roast as well, if you prefer a less bold flavor. Our camper is a 2023 Luna Rover made by Intech RV. As we start at the front of the camper, I'll explain more about that access door later in the video. Up front, I swapped to an ARC X0350 all-terrain jockey wheel. Not long after, I upgraded the hitch for a lock and roll articulating hitch. This has not only improved towing, but will allow for traversing even more challenging terrain. The Rover package includes things like beefier all-terrain tires and these robust side steps around the entire camper. They are strong enough to support standing on to reach your roof rack. Moving up to the roof rack, on the campsite I installed a cargo basket and our new Iron Man awning. In the large Husky box, we carry things such as fire starters, shovel, tools, and other camp essentials. In the smaller DeWalt lives all of our awning guy lines, cam lock hooks, and tent stakes. In the larger one below resides things like our shore power cable, surge protector, and anything else random we may want to bring along. As we move to the rear of the camper, there are two rear stabilizers underneath. We pan up, you can see the amazing galley kitchen. On the left hand side of the kitchen, it has a two burner Dometic cooktop. Next to that is the all stainless farm style kitchen sink which might I say is quite deep for a small camper kitchen sink. And next to the sink is our Dometic CFF 45 refrigerator, which will run on both 12 volt and 110 volt power. Directly above the refrigerator is a small cabinet. There is an option to add a small microwave to this area, but we have no plans to do so as we'd much rather have the storage space. Inside this cabinet, we have things like paper plates, grease pans for the Blackstone, napkins, and other kitchen essentials. At the very top of the kitchen is a shelf. We filled it with the semi-opaque black bins from Ikea, which fit perfectly. We keep mostly food items in these, such as snacks, dry goods, and most importantly, coffee-making supplies. Down underneath the sink is another cabinet. This is mostly the utility center of the camper. On the left is the Renogy solar charge controller that I installed, and on the right is all the plumbing with a small 12 volt pump towards the rear. With a better view, you can now see the 100 amp hour lithium battery. Next to that is the hose that I fished up into the cabin for our diesel heater. That hose will connect to the heater hose through this four inch marine hatch that I installed in the old battery well. The hose on the heater feeds up through there and I used RV sewer connectors to join them together. The wiring for the heater also exits through that well to a connection underneath the rear of the trailer. I'll show you that connection in just a moment. I use the dryer hose since it allows me to tuck it away and leave room for more storage. Now moving to our left, there is another shallow cabinet. Here is where I installed our Levelmate Pro. We use this cabinet mostly for storing our collapsible bucket that we use to catch our sink water. Down underneath, we can see that bucket. At the upper right, we see the 12 volt connection I mentioned earlier that connects our diesel heater to battery power. Briefly, I wanted to mention all the cabinet doors are soft close, which is a really nice little touch, I think. You may find it strange that I'm pointing out our small collapsible garbage can, but I assure you, it is one of the most asked about accessories that we have. It is definitely convenient to have a small trash can right there in the kitchen. On the left side of the kitchen is the power center. This contains the switches for the cool blue accent lighting, the 12 volt switch for the refrigerator, the switch for the water pump, and lastly, the switch for the overhead light. Now that overhead light, even in the dark, is not very bright. So I added some additional LED light strips to either side of the kitchen. Those light strips were originally truck bed lights that Melissa had gotten me before we traded our truck in for the Bronco. These really help light up the space at night and those white walls really help reflect that light into the kitchen. Moving on to the driver's side, in this first compartment, you'll see we have our five gallon propane tank for the cooktop. We'll close that up Next to that is our 30 amp shore power connection. Above that is the SAE solar power connection for the battery, which needed a little attention. 
And above that is the coax connection for those rare occasions where we may be at a campground that has cable. This vent I'm pointing out here is the old battery vent leading out from underneath the sink. Up next behind this door, we have the city water connection and our tank fill spout. On either side of the camper, there's a porch light above the windows which helps light up the area outside the door. Again here, we can see the side step rails for getting up to your roof rack. On this side of the rack, I mounted our homemade solar shower made of ABS pipe along with the kick-ass shower room. That shower room also really comes in handy as a changing room, especially at campgrounds. If you aren't exactly close to the showers or the bathrooms, it's really nice to be able to set that room up and change right there. The inner zip-up door lines up nicely with the camper door, so you can just reach inside to get your clothes. Ironically, we have yet to use it as an actual shower room. These containers here hold our diesel heater and our Anchor Solix C1000 power station. And here we have our solar panels for our camper battery and the anchor power station. Now let's move to the inside of the camper. Up first, you can see we have this 32 inch Samsung Smart TV. We upgraded to the Samsung from the factory Insignia TV. That Insignia wouldn't even allow for screen mirroring, so we knew that had to go. We were able to snag this Samsung for a spectacular deal as an open box at Best Buy and couldn't be happier with the decision. Up above the TV, we have some more cabinet space. There aren't many things I don't like about this little camper, but these cabinet doors were one of them. They don't stay open on their own. I'm not sure why they didn't use different hinges so that these doors could support themselves, but they didn't. This was an easy fix though. I picked up these small gas struts from Amazon, installed them on both outer doors, and now they stay open. As for what we store up here, we haven't really made it anything specific. Here we have our fan cover for the Max Air fan. In the middle, we have our small first aid kit. And then over here on the left, I store our tech pouch that is made by Air. It's a really nice little pouch for all our battery chargers and stuff. It really comes in handy. And then obviously here we have some extra tissues. Up above the windows, we have some more storage space. Melissa keeps things like her makeup and medications up here over on my side. I have my vitamins, deodorant, and other toiletries, and the main supply of tissues, of course. Both windows have pull-down blackout shades, along with side pull windows with screens to keep the bugs out. Over here next to the TV, we've started our sticker wall. We wanted to put them on these boards rather than any surface, so whenever the day comes and we get a different camper, we can take them with us. Our plan is to fill both sides of the TV with stickers from all over the country. There are hooks on either side that I've seen other owners hang storage pouches from. Now we get to see our anchor power station with all matter of gear plugged into it. And yes, I know, the cable management is less than stellar at the moment, but I do have some plans in mind to clean things up a bit. Over on the right hand side is the Jensen head unit for the stereo. And right next to the stereo, you can see where I ran the dryer hose into the living space for the diesel heater as well. Now swinging around to the front end of the interior real quick, you can see the two interior speakers. Back underneath the head unit, we have the 8000 BTU air conditioner that will only run on shore power. And sliding over to the left is our fireplace that also provides electric heat when we're plugged in. You can change the brightness of the flames and change the colors of them as well. It's actually pretty cool and does a pretty good job. Back up in the front of the camper, we have a small cubby on either side. We usually use these for our dirty laundry and the mattress cover bag. Now to get back to what that front access panel was for. Here in this center cabinet, we actually have a toilet. That front door is to access the cassette for the toilet. When we were looking at different campers, using the restroom was fairly front and center. Once we saw that the Luna could be optioned with a toilet, that's it, we were sold. Now you'll see comments all over the place, especially in the Luna owners group on Facebook. People either love the toilet or they hate it, and we fall under the love it category. It is really convenient for those first thing in the morning needs. Not having to get completely dressed up to go out and use the bathroom first thing is absolutely amazing. Now, in the people that do not like them camp, the main complaint, if you will, is that you're sleeping with your head right next to a toilet. Well, the reality is you really aren't. The cabinet closes up, and as long as you close the flap, there's no smell. I'm not sure who these people are that feel like stuff is just gonna jump out of the toilet and under the cabinet, or are just making an absolute mess, 
that they feel this is unsanitary, I just don't get it. I've seen others who just simply sleep with their head at the opposite end. Now, we have designated this inside toilet to a number one situation only. But in the event of an extreme emergency, then and only then will it be used for other purposes. Swinging around to the campsite of the trailer, we have the main power panel. First is a switch for the main cabin lights. I believe here I was commenting about how I'd like to eventually install a dimmer switch as sometimes those LEDs can be pretty harsh when you first turn them on. There's also a switch on this side for the cabinet accent lighting as well. Those work well as alternatives once the sun has gone down. The other two switches operate the campsite porch light and the blue front cap light. On the non-camp side, there are just two switches, one for the porch light and one for the main cabin lights. While we're on the topic of lighting, back up front, there are two reading lights. A quick push turns on a blue light, while an extended hold will turn on a soft white light. And now here we have one of the most popular features about the brand, the very large front window has a full blackout shade for privacy and to help keep some sunlight out. Up top, we have the very nice Max Air Fan with the rainproof cover. Definitely handy for getting that fresh air in and keeping down on the condensation. The remote on the wall here can be used to control it. And of course, we have your standard safety features, a combo CO smoke detector up high and a propane detector located underneath the fuse panel. Real quick, back here by the door, I installed this little rack. It works great to hold our keys. I put my wallet up here and it also holds all of the remotes for the TV, the air conditioner, and the fireplace. Now transitioning back outside, I just wanted to show off that blue front cap light real quick. It's a really nice light to have that isn't too harsh in the dark. And there you have it, a little tour of our camper. While it is not a $55,000 Patriot camper, it sure will and has taken us to all kinds of places. It's what works for us. And that is an important part to remember when watching any of these types of videos. Whatever you get for your camping setup has to work for you. You may be fine with a ground tent, a sleeping bag, and an MRE. Or you may need something even a little more comfortable than what we have. No gear, cheap or expensive, is going to be worth it if it doesn't work for you and how you enjoy the outdoors. As always, if you have any questions or would like a more in-depth video on anything you saw on this one, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to explain more on what gear we have and how it works. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.